how far would you go to save sanctuary to save the world well we're gonna find out in season five we just got an update and what's going to happen in the season five the naming of season five the mechanics in season five a more in-depth reveal of the new end game activity infernal hordes in diablo 4 season five in this video we're going to give a quick overview of what season five is going to bring us we got a little bit more detail and then we're going to look over the notes that was dropped in reference to the minutia of season five everything and anything season five so if you're interested in that topic stick around and find out what you're willing to sacrifice in order to save sanctuary or the world all right but before we get into that a lot of you continue to watch my video but do not subscribe if you can find it in your heart to hit the subscription button and support my content. I would appreciate the support. Okay, are you guys ready to go to hell? Okay, so the dev teams for Diablo 4 have been always coining this phrase, welcome to hell, welcome to hell. Well, in season five, we are finally gonna go to hell. And we now know that season five is going to be the season of the infernal hordes. Now, season five begins August 6th. How far would we go to save Sanctuary to save the world? We're going to be asked that question in season five. And what price would you pay to sacrifice your life for this? So we are asked, going to be asked a lot of questions in season five. We're going to be thrusted into hell and Let's talk about what we can expect in season five and what this new update revealed to us as far as the mechanics and gameplay. We are going to meet a guy named Lochran. At first, he will seem normal, but we will very quickly notice something is off with him. Something is strange with this guy. Now, Lochran and Estrell are our allies, and these two people are experts in demons, and it's going to be their job to teach us how to return to hell and give us that knowledge so we be can become more powerful to be able to battle the infernal hordes. Now, the infernal hordes is a new endgame activity in Diablo 4 season five, which is primarily a wave based activity. And in between the waves, we will have to make choices. We will have to choose between three offers, which can change the world in a positive or a negative way. And we will be offered both a boon and a bane. And the dev team referred to it as a kiss and a curse. This is a temptation that the Fell Council is making to us. In this temptation, we are offered more power, but with that power comes a cost, and we get to choose which temptation we are going to pursue during our Infernal Horde run. And that choice will customize our experience. Now, the devs want Infernal Horde to be an endgame activity we play over and over again. And with that in mind, they created a broad set of enemies to fight, one of them being the Cathedral of Hell enemies. They have been revived and will get to fight them amongst others. Now, Un Infernal Horde is unlocked in World Tier 3, and after completing the internal quest line that takes you back to Hell, this will unlock the Infernal Horde gameplay. There's also a new reputation track, The Mother's Gift. This will help us get prepared for the Infernal Hordes mechanic. Lots of cool rewards that will make us more powerful as we progress onto World Tier 3. There's also going to be micro dungeons called Breaches. This offers us a glimpse at the Infernal Hordes mechanics. This mechanic will introduce us to the mechanic before confronting the Infernal Hordes at world tier three now the fell council is the final boss in season five there are five fell council members but in season five during the boss fight we will only encounter three of them during the fight this will allow 
the Diablo 4 dev team to create many different flavors of the boss fight. They mentioned there will be 10 variations of the Fell Council boss fight in all, which means every time we go to the Fell Council boss fight, there's a good chance it'll be a different fight than the last time we encountered them. Now, upon defeating the waves of enemies and the Fell Council boss fight, the spoils of hell will spawn and then we will consume our burning ether to open the chests. During the infernal horde waves, it will be advantageous for us to kill as many enemies as possible, as this will allow us to gather up all the ether we can. More ether you attain, the bigger the payout at the end. Also in season five, we are gonna get new uniques and legendaries. With the ether we earn, in the infernal hordes we will be able to get new uniques legendaries and rare materials a lot of these new uniques and legendaries will look like they were forged in hell so they will have a unique look they will also have unique visual effects and sound effects if you die in the infernal horde it's a lot like nightmare dungeons the higher you climb in the infernal horde the less amount of revives you will have and you will be booted out of the mode if you run out of revives. Okay, so here's a communication from Blizzard. Slay endless demons in Season of the Infernal Hordes. And they just go on to say thank you for everyone who participated in the PTR. And obviously they use that information to give us what we are going to have in Season 5. And it says, Hal has arrived, like I mentioned in my opening monologue. They were always coining the phrase, welcome to hell, welcome to hell. Well, hell has arrived. And the new mechanic in season five, like I said earlier, is the infernal hordes. And basically, it's a wave-based activity, which we will have to navigate through and complete. And then once we complete all the waves, we will fight the Fell Council, which is the Season 5 final boss. And as you can see here, legions of infernal demons are densely packed, their numbers increasing in size with the helm, with the realm of hatred, sorry. So they have buffed up the amount of enemy density, which is really good. And then the infernal offers the infernal hordes have time limited 60 second waves so it's going to be quicker than what we experienced in the ptr if you manage to survive you will be taunted with a inferno offer this is the bane and boon the kiss and curse thing and that is going to crank up the intensity making your run far more challenging and rewarding so it's going to amp up every wave. And like I said earlier, it's really going to be put upon us to beat as many of the enemies in the waves. It's just going to help us earn more ether. Now, while masses of infernal enemies attempt to crush you at every angle, look for burning ether. You must press your most precious commodity in the realm of hatred. Earn burning ether by slaying ether fens and ether lords, or by smashing soul spires and ether masses. Destroying any of these provides two burning ether for your efforts. Burning ether is earned individually, regardless of playing solo in a group. By the way, guys, infernal hordes can be played in a group environment although they didn't want to single out the solo players so it can be played either in a solo mode or in a group mode however your trusted pet will aid you in collecting these though you don't lose any burning either on death should you run out of limited revives you'll be removed from this ungodly arena and unable to unlock any spoils of hell like I said earlier, similar to Nightmare Dungeons, where we have a limited number of revives, Infernal Horde will have that same uh, mechanic. And the further you climb up in the Infernal Horde 
chain, the less revives we are going to have. So be very careful with death because once you run out of revives, like it states here, you are going to be removed from the game, uh, the infernal game. Okay, spoils of hell. If you survive the Ellen Sword's defeat, you, uh, the Fell Council, which is the last activity in the Infernal Hordes, that's with the Fell Council boss fight, which is the season five boss fight. Uh, you will have the spoils of hell. That's where we open up the chests. These chests are filled with legendary and unique items, summoning materials, and gold. Spoils of hell cost 20 ether but slay enough infernal enemies to spare 60 either and unlock the spoils of greater equipment, which guarantees an item with a greater affect. So kill everything, guys. Make sure you're burning up everything and getting as much either as possible during your runs. Now, everybody remembers the infernal compass, which was a really pain point during the PTR as far as attaining them and uh leveling them up it was really a pain in the you know what we can now craft them with sigil power and forgotten souls and infernal compass tiers increase the starting difficulty of monsters and the potency of rewards while decreasing your number of revives so remember the infernal compass had tiers and the higher the tier now the less amount of revives like we talked about before. So they're now uh, able to be crafted and they also can be earned by opening chests of mystery, chests of steel and slaying doomsayers and hell tides where they're guaranteed to drop. They also have a 75% drop rate from whisper caches. Infernal compasses of higher tiers will also drop in end game activities such as Nightmare Dungeons and The Pit. So it looks like they listened to our issue with this Infernal Compass, and it looks like it's just going to be a lot more easier to attain and upgrade the tiers on them, which is good news. Okay, now, the Fell Priests, as you know, these... Anyone that's played Diablo 2 knows what these guys are, the Fell Council. They are the new end game activity boss fight. It's the last thing we're going to do in the Infernal Hordes. It's the boss for the Infernal Hordes. And it's the Fell Council. And there are five of them. And each time we go into the Infernal Hordes and we get to the boss fight, uh, there's five of them, but we will only fight three. And like I alluded on my previous segment, they this is going to provide the Diablo 4 dev team the uh, opportunity to spice up each new each boss fight for us. So there's five of them. We're going to fight three of them. So every time we go in, they says there's they said there's about ten variations of boss fights because we only get to fight three of the five. So the point of it being is they wanted to add variety to the boss fight. Um, so it's going to be very interesting to see all the how those differences are going to translate into the game. And um, what else? Yes, the new uniques and legendaries. So there's about 50. These 50 new unique and legendary items are going to look like they're forged in hell and they're going to have special visual and sound effects to them. So they're going to be very unique. They're going to be very obvious. And it's going to be very interesting to see what the Diablo 4 dev team, how creative they got. They demonstrated a pair of boots that every time you level up, it just, the boots explode and kill everything around the character which was very, uh, very interesting and unique. So uh, can't wait to see all the different variations that this is going to look like. Now, we are going to have a seasonal and eternal quest lines. And just, they got into, for those of you that continue to play on the internal realm and do not want to play any of the seasonal stuff, here is actually a visual representation 
and summary of what internal rem players can expect to have in the eternal server and as you can see the infernal horde is going to be an activity after season five ends that will remain in the game as this uh, graphic illustration represents okay so of lambs and wolves is the seasonal quest line and this is where we get to meet the two people that i talked about earlier now these two are experts in demons and they're passing on that knowledge to us so we can learn it and go to the infernal horde prepared so this is kind of the premise of the seasonal quest line and this is how we're going to progress and it's going to get us prepared to um to the uh infernal hordes all right we also have some general updates to the game so there's going to be updates to helltide legendary drop rates and more so helltides baneful heart drop will increase abundance across chests world bosses are now guaranteed to drop from helltide commanders the cost to fight blood maiden in world tier one and two has been decreased and torture gifts now have 75 cinders unique items every unique in the game has been updated with season of the infernal hordes we want to make unique special again pursue of equalizing all builds across the game our goals was to make build defining uniques the best item for the skill they support and for their corresponding affects is to have values that are best in the slot considering uniques can't be tempered we want them to feel competitive to affixes that can be tempered hallelujah our uh, philosophy for balancing considering the holistic package of the item they have random values but affixes are set aside are set alongside the unique aspect to see all these updates check out our diablo 4 patch notes for season of the foreigner hordes here on august 1st and we're going to get into that in just a second guys mythic uniques obviously uber uniques will be known as mythic uniques they will drop with a distinctive beam or light should you come across them and we've already talked about this in a previous video they now have that purple uh color in them they're very distinct and they also will be distinct when they drop on the ground um experience gain looks like they're amping up the experience again as you remember the previously a level 60 character kills a level 80 monster the xp was like a level 70 monster experience and bonus experience so it was capped at 10 now level 60 character kills a level 80 monster level 80 monster experience plus bonus so uh we now have up to 30 levels higher than your current character level to get xp where before it was capped at 10 enchanting no longer requires angel breath and relies on the respective salvage from legendary items instead they did a lot of things with crowd control they talked about the seasonal realm for those who th who thrill at an increased challenge profane mind cages return and stack up to three times which correlates with the fact that we now can get xp up to 30 time um 30 levels above our character so this is why it makes great perfect sense so profane mind cages are staying and up to three stacks each profane mind cage as you guys remember was 10 levels higher so three of them make 30 so this is awesome earn rewards with the seasonal journey and battle pass yada 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 okay the shop and finally we now know the developer update live stream is going to be august 1st at 11 a.m pdt and there's going to be a live stream which dives further into the season of the infernal hordes taking a closer look at what's to come okay everyone that is the latest and greatest on everything diablo 4 season 5 the season of the infernal hordes let me know your thoughts let me know what you think let me know what are you going to be playing season five i'd love to hear your feedback what's your take on this new information that we got 
I would love to hear from you guys. All right, everybody. Thank you for watching. And as always, we'll hope to see you next time. Take care. The opinions expressed in this video are mine and solely mine. Healthy debate is always encouraged. Hate is never welcomed. So get over it.